to be long, but um No, take your time. Yeah, man. Just just wanna let you know, uh you know what what we're doing, this is not this has not been the first time that we've been doing this, man. Um you know, we're, we're this is a, a actual ministry, bro. And, and really, um, I, I'm gonna ask you some questions, man. Um, I just want to let you know before I ask you any questions, I want to let you know that, like, my heart's desire is for you to truly, and I really mean it's like truly be honest about what you've been taught to believe. And measure it up, not just you know, Most. quote unquote, what the Bible says, but also with like literally what Jesus taught, and 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 how the actions of Jesus and the apostles and the the focus of the church, it, like where it is versus you know where your focus is. I just wanted to be clear with that before I before I end up um saying anything. And also if my, you know, uh if my connection kind of goes bad, just let me know and I'll shut up. All right. Yeah. So, all right, cool, man. So so first up, man, um, you know, what's your name? And where are you from, man? My name Jonathan. Cool. cool. I'm from Ohio. All right, that's what's up. You know, I'm from Pittsburgh, Steelers Nation. You know how we do. Um, okay. Yeah, man, I just want to know, like, how, how long have you, like, you know, been aware of the whole Hebrew Roots movement? Since 2012. Got it, got it. And you know what, man, by, by the way that you sound, you, you really do sound like a very forthright kind of brother. You know, that that's a admirable quality you know what i'm saying um but just like the apostle paul uh a lot of us could be you know thinking that we're right and we're going right in the wrong direction you know i mean and god had to knock him off his horse you know <laughs> and then give him some real eyesight and all of a sudden he started going in the right direction like a maniac you know and um have a seat what you say it again no, no, I was talking to my kids. Uh, okay, cool, cool. All right, that's what's up, man. You know, um, so let me ask you, man. Um, I'm asking you a question. Like, yeah. do you classify yourself as a, a Hebrew Israelite? And obviously, the, the question is yes. I mean, the answer is yes. Am I right? Yeah, I'm a. I'm I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Hebrew okay. Israelite. Okay. Okay. So my next question is, why is that personally important to you? Well, for me, it's not it's not based off of it's not based off of religion. It's simply it's simply as if if I ask you, maybe you would classify as an African American. Right. Right. So yeah. For me, Right. So for me, I don't classify as an African-American. I classify as a Hebrew Israelite. The, uh, the reason why something like that would be important to me is because, for one, that we've been we've been in America where there's so much great oppression against black people, you know, from from day one coming to America all the way to now still happening every single day. So much oppression towards us at some point, And then. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put this out here. Most most black people, mo most uh, I, I would say it, it seems like from from what I experience and what I know, it seems like the majority of black people that's in America, majority of them are the people that came from a struggle. They came from real struggle, you know, growing up in the projects or the hood. You know, mom and dad on drugs. You know, come from a real struggle like that. Is is my is you know and so I, I believe that the minority of black people grew up where they was middle class and they didn't have no real issues you know where they selling dope on the block constantly people getting killed on the block and you forced to sell drugs because there there's no other way out and stuff like that being being we in this situation is so many of us that are hopeless that feel hopeless and feel like there is no God 
you know, and been told that we been taught to hate ourselves. That was something in slavery. If you know anything about slavery, we was taught to hate black skin. We was taught to hate ourselves from the slave masters, to hate everything that's black. And we can see the effects of that right now today when we killing each other and selling dope to each other and all of this. This is a psychologically a, a subliminal thing that we hate ourselves. We hate black people. And so we self-destruct. A lot of us don't, a lot of us are hopeless and in despair and don't believe there is no God. And then, and okay, and so because I minister to young brothers all around, I get, mo mo most of the brothers I minister to, they in the streets, they into the rap music, sagging their pants, smoking weed, selling drugs, shooting guns, you know, stuff like this. And when, when I talk to them about Jesus, I would say out, out of as many, as many of them as I talk to, I would say eight out of 10, I get the same answer when I talk to them about Jesus. And, right. and that answer is, how can I serve him? That's the white man's God. The, the, the white man gave us the Bible and slavery. Every, every movie or picture of Jesus, he's white, blonde hair, blue eyes. How could I serve him? And they put us in slavery. They, they the reason we under this oppression. You know, okay. we, we- So let me, let me pause you right there, man. Still. So basically what I see what you're saying that, you know, when, when you end up, like really trying to minister the gospel to somebody or when you try to identify yeah. what it really like, like how you can somehow identify with the word of God, the, the whole thing about you being a Hebrew has had such an impact on you that it, that it already gives you in some sense, some type of pre identity already before you get into the gospel, before you get into Christ died for you, before you get into Christ, God loves you. And so, and so, um, when it comes to ministering the gospel, you know, you're saying like, man, it's already powerful enough to be able to share and say with somebody, listen, the reason why these things are happening to you is because I could show you in the word right now. And because you don't know who you really are, you're, you're saying it, that, that, that seems to, to be, you know, a lot more of a relatable palette when you go ahead and try to walk the word of God out in your life. And when you go ahead and try to minister the word of God to other people, you, you, you're saying it's, it's, you found something that has made it a more relatable palette. Like that, that's, that's what I'm getting from you. You know what I mean? If, if I'm wrong, definitely check me you know what i'm saying but but that's what i'm i'm that's my way of saying i feel you you know what i mean like am, am i right or am, am i like i went off in the direction no 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 in, in in a sense that's true yeah it's it's relatable you know that mo most of us that's like into the street life and all of that most of us this is how we feel because of our oppression so we got physical oppression that we deal with on earth and our family's been dealing with in the history of us being in this country dealing with things that is that we don't have no real answers to no real right explanations. right right and there's so nobody I'm glad that you you kind of pointed that out man because you know to, to tell you the truth man I'm, I'm like there's really a lot of real narratives out there and um, me just being a 34-year-old black male um, and a great lover of history, because I'm always listening to the stories of the world, you know, I, I, I've kind of noticed that um, th this whole sense of identity is, is really an American thing. I remember one time, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of, a, I work for Three Rivers Youth, you know, I'm a, a prevention specialist, and every year we have to like go through these certain amount of trainings sometime in november I, I took a training on gangs and the origins of gangs it was an eight hour training seven or eight hours one of the things that this dude said was when it comes to america obviously he said that uh americans suffer from something that a lot of other countries don't have an issue with and it is a sense of identity. Now, now you have to follow me on this. So that means all the other countries, they don't really have these big haggles about what we do. He said that during the times of World War I, there was actually a lot of dudes that came back from World War I, either World War I or World War II. And they didn't, you know, the society didn't know what to do with these, these war vets because they came back a little crazy. They have what we call PTSD today. 
You know what I mean? They would hear loud sounds and they would grab people to run for cover because they thought there was a bomb. Like they didn't know what to do with these people. You know, they, they, they got ticked off real easily. They did not fit into society after they gave their lives, you know, for fighting in the war. So when they came back into them cities, you know, some got into crime, some a little crazy. They just, they, they had no debriefing. And this has a lot to do with humanity anyway, but no one debriefed them. They didn't have that system set up yet. And you know what happened? Those dudes eventually got together and started finding themselves. They said, man, oh, you're in a war too? They said, yeah. And all of a sudden they started getting together and they started talking. And they said, you know what, man, we ain't crazy. You know, it's just that nobody understands us. And so what happened was they actually created this little gang, which eventually became a, a motorcycle gang, and it was called Hell's Angels. And that's the reason why that little biker gang exists today, because you had people who who just they, they went through a lot of junk. And, and they fought for their country. And all of a sudden, they came back a little crazy. And society didn't know what the heck to do with them. And that's just one origin of a gang. But look at the content that made that up. America itself, when you do your studies, suffers from an issue of identity. The question is, since that is the narrative of America, we have to ask ourselves, is that the narrative of the Bible? Is that the narrative of Jesus? Did they have these kind of issues when you look in the New Testament, when the church is being founded, and all of a sudden you had all these kind of churches popping up, Corinthian church, Colossian church, uh, the church in Galatia, the seven churches that Jesus had John write to? Did they have these kind of issues? And the, the answer is, is no. And so the problem is, is that these kind of narratives have looked at the scriptures and have tried to say, OK, this is what the Bible really means. Now, what's wrong with this picture? Well, the, 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 what's wrong with this picture is, is that it's taking the Bible's narrative and putting it to the side and injecting its own narrative based on the experiences that's going on with them. And they putting that in. They're allowing that they're not allowing the word of God to change them. They're actually changing the narrative of the word of God. And that, that that's a problem. When people look at, you know, I'm not gonna go through the whole list, but when people look at the prophecies and Deuteronomy 28 and all this stuff, it is not enough to be like, oh. Look at what Deuteronomy 28 says or look at what the Old Testament says or how they're suffering. And then you look at how blacks are suffering. That is not the way that you say, oh, then this is what these scriptures mean. You know what I mean? That, that's called a bit of parallel mania. And not only that, historically speaking, when it comes to the Old Testament, you know, a lot of them prophecies and all them curses, and things like that. Yeah, God, he ended up dealing with them with that stuff. You know what I mean? God didn't wait. If you had someone who was five years old and he was your son and you said, if you end up acting bad, I'm going to whoop you. You wouldn't wait for him to be 25 or 30 years old to whoop him. You wouldn't do that. You whoop him right now. That, that, you know, that's all the thing when it comes to the Old Testament and things like that. God didn't wait 35 or 4,000 years later to all of a sudden send blacks into slavery and things like that. Nah, you know. And I could get into why that is and I could break it down with the scriptures, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just trying to I'm what I, before I could disprove and all that other stuff. I'm just trying to stop and to get you to think, because these brothers that have gone out into the streets, you got to hear what I'm saying. Please pay attention. You got to hear what I'm saying. I'm trying to help you. These brothers that have gone out into the street and by, I love you, by the way, I'm serious. These brothers that have gone out into the street with this kind of narrative, they were not people of God. Now, maybe some of them were, you know, because they're really honest, but they could be honestly wrong. But I'm telling you right now, like from the deep beginning, the people that gone out there with that fake narrative that they were not people of God. There was a guy named Abba Bivens. You can look him up right now. I have a clip on my YouTube video that you can look at right now of a man who once was with him. 
This is before we could write stuff down. So the only information we got is to go by these elders who were with them. There was an elder who said that he was talking with Abba Bivens, and he said, listen, this 12 tribes chart that you got going on, like, why are you doing that, Abba Bivens? You know this ain't true. Why, like, why, why are you making this up? What, where are you getting this from? And Abba Bivens said, listen, I know it's not true, but this is enough to get their foot in the door. There was another man in his name. Uh, I think his name was Lamak or Labada or whatever. And he now does interviews, you know, because he was a part of the seven. You know how old that is? That's 1960s. He La-ha. came out and said La-ha. how, you know what, this whole thing about the 12 tribes and, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the Americas, Judah and this and that. He, he ended up saying how that thing was fake and, and how they ended up manipulating certain scriptures to, to, to again, end up like preaching this falsehood. And so people were finally like coming out. I was just talking to somebody, you know, off air. And he said that when he was there in the 1980s, he said he noticed when these Hebrew schools started popping up, he said that it, the good news was it was bringing in all kind of dudes that were in the jails, all kind of drug addicts that were in the streets. They were excited about the word of God. But the problem was, is that when they started to teach them, it got mismanaged. There was so much influx of men, good men that were coming in, but they didn't really know how to to really train them up in the word. And so what happened was you had people that started to sleep with each other's wives. You had people who had sort of bringing their drugs into the thing and still selling drugs and all of a sudden giving that money to the church. You had people uh, actually, you know, dying and killing themselves after there were failed prophecies. And the reason why I failed was because despite them having whatever they believe, they didn't know how to use it to actually change their lives. So the people that came into the movement, they left out drug addicts still. Some left out and they didn't believe in God at all. They went to the black conscious movement. Others, you know, like I said, they died. They committed suicide after those prophecies failed. It was terrible. And so, you know, I I look at those fruits. Others they started to get so big in their ranks that they actually split off into other factions, House of David, House of Israel, IUIC, Israel United in Christ, uh, Israelite Church of God in Jesus Christ, ISUPK, all kind of stuff, uh, uh, GMS. All the, they, they had more splits than the Protestant Reformation itself because the, the, the spirit wasn't right and the things that they preached wasn't right. And and so I say these things because I, I say these things because there is nothing wrong with being a Christian, with calling yourself a Christian is found in the Bible three times. The things that Jesus and the apostles were excited about are not the things that the black Hebrew Israelites got you excited about. When you say to somebody, you know what, and you're trying to give them the gospel because that's something that you want to do and you want to try to like find a way to relate to them and things like that. And you have to say, well, you know what, bro, let me show you how you're a Hebrew. If that's not what the message or a method that that Paul and the disciples ended up uh, uh, using, then then perhaps we shouldn't use that either. Is not the gospel enough? Is not shown what Christ did enough. You know, it's almost like saying, you know, what, this is nice, Lord, but I'm going to use this thing over here because I really think this could work. And the problem is, is that no one ever in the New Testament ever used that ploy of don't you know who you are? You know, that so that that's a that's an issue. You know, if it was good enough for Jesus and the disciples, then it should be good enough for us. And if we're a little unfamiliar with, you know, what they were doing to win souls, then we need to get in our word and find out, okay, what were they really saying to really get people to understand? You know, even in in Acts 17, Paul stood up on Mars Hill and he started to talk about some things that were very relevant to them. He said, look, I know that, you know, you are sons and children of God, just as your own poets have said. I know you have an altar that says to the unknown God. Let me talk to you about this unknown God. So he tried to, you know, reason with them or something like that, but it was never at the expense of the gospel. You know what I mean? And so the, the issue is, 
if you continue to go in this theological doctrinal direction of the Hebrew roots movement, you're going to find yourself having these beliefs that go directly against, you know, what, what Jesus and the disciples and the word of God is, is, is all saying. I know I have not showed you a liquor proof, uh, anything that I said. I know I haven't, but I just wanted to lay my premise b- b- before, before anything. You know what I mean? Cause I, I've done this before where we went through scriptures and, you know, I showed some stuff and it was like, uh, uh, no, but this time I figured before I even try to even prove anything, I just wanted to, to just, just give you something to really think about, man. Um, and so, yeah, I know Mama Cherry and, you know, people are kind of yelling. You know what I mean? I know that, you know, a little, little passionate. I understand that, you know, but it is all out of love, man. And and all we're here to do is to to hear you out and, and take what you believe and really measure it with the scriptures. And by the end of the day, you as a man got to stop and think like, well, dag, like, I believe this. But the word of God is excited and focused about this thing over here. So I got a question like, who gave this to me to believe? You know what I'm saying? Okay, well, I heard everything you said. You know, I, I disagree, you know, with, with some of the stuff. You know, a good portion of the stuff you said. Like, I understand a, a lot of the stuff you're saying. And now, as far as preaching the gospel, now, the thing is, if if these people, if a lot of people won't receive the gospel because of they know certain specific things happened to them in history concerning the Bible and the people who were supposedly Christian that brought the Bible into play. To, into their ancestors' lives and history. And when people know that that kind of history, what, what what I hear a lot of Christians say is, you know, well, you just you just preach to them Jesus. But th- this this is a problem that's that's this is a great problem in the church. This is one of the one of the major elephants in the room is that you 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 preach to them Jesus and, and basically everything else will will go over. You know, so it so it's basically like, well, well, I don't need to explain. You know, I don't, I don't have to explain nothing about these issues. We're gonna pretend those issues didn't happen and just believe on what Jesus said. Some now there is a number of people that can do that. Everybody, everybody's not able to do that. There's a lot of people, as a matter of fact, that can't do that, and they they need an explanation. They need to know why. Well, if this is really if this is really the God of this Bible, who you say this is really the truth, how could these specific things happen? And these certain people do this, and then give us the Bible. Like they need real explanations. And if you can't explain it, and all you can tell them is, mm. "Well, God loves you, and everything He does is for a purpose," you know, and you you preach that to them. A lot of a lot of brothers that's in the streets and living a street life, a lot of them don't want to hear that. You may right, have right. some do, but I can tell you a lot of them don't want to hear that. They want actual explanations. Now, OK, now, OK. It, and and I'm, I'm glad that you said that. I'm so glad that you said that, man, because, you know, this is the number one reason why, you know, a lot of people that are in ministry and pastors and all kind of people that we, we really do need to get, you know, our, our kind of street apologetics. up. I admit. You know what I mean? Because, you know, when you look in the New Testament, the church addressed issues in the church, no matter what it was. Now, I know that a lot of those issues ain't issues we got today. I mean, a good bit more. But, yeah, I mean, it's like there is so much that, that even I could say as an individual, because I not only study the word, but I actually study history. So when people have been given certain narratives that I'm not going to accept Jesus, Matt, because Jesus is, you know, the, the white man's religion. The white man gave us Christianity. And also, every time I see these pictures, Matt, I see that Jesus is white, bro. That's a problem. And so what I usually say is, I said, well, well, well time out. First off, when you look at the earliest pictures of Jesus and, and since the first century, whether it's inscribed on walls or even in the catacombs or even in the tombs and the things in Rome, there's a Roman basilica, whereas Jesus being black. 
But at the same time, it was never an issue in the first, second, third, fourth, 15, 14, for whatever, 12th century. It was never an issue of Jesus having a, a, a color at all. So you look at all those paintings and things you can show and you can see that Jesus. So how in the world did a white man give us Christianity? Another thing is you can also look at the fact that the first church to actually be established in Europe was a Philippian church. That is a New Testament epistle that Paul actually wrote. That is the first European church established in Europe. That means that the people who were black gave Europe Christianity. When you look at the Coptic church that was founded in 45 AD, when you look at the Ethiopian Orthodox church that was founded in the third or fourth century or something like that, and how it flourished throughout Africa for nearly almost 1400 years, you already had Africans that were familiar with Christianity. Matter of fact, there's a story how an African kingdom that was Christian actually helped keep some Muslims safe. That's what happens when you do your history. The reason why they say that, you know, oh, Matt, the, the, the white man gave us Christianity. No, nah, don't you know? Don't you know? Don't you know that the three biggest slave revolts that ever happened in American history happened by black people who believe in Jesus? The three biggest ones. They didn't call on the ancestors and things like that. I think maybe one of them did when you look at the Haitian Revolution, but that's a whole other story. But, you know, you look at that and they, they called on Christ. They read their word. They did their thing and they rose up because they saw the, the, the injustice that happened in Exodus. And they said, OK, if God could deliver those people with Moses, then maybe God will use me to, to, to give me the freedom, too. This is in the midst of all this stuff. You had blacks that were learning to read the Bible and the whites took the Bible away. If you even tried to learn to read, you, you were killed, let alone the Bible. You had blacks that were sitting up in the, the, the balconies of white churches and they couldn't really go down there at the other church. They had to sit up in the balconies and they got so sick of it. They didn't say, oh, you know what? This is a white man's religion. No, our ancestors said, I right, let's establish our own church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church that was founded in Philadelphia. I mean, and all this stuff was going on. You had, a, uh, uh, you had a preacher, I forget his name, but he was saying Jesus is black. So you had all this stuff that was happening. You had whites that were no longer baptizing uh, slaves because all of a sudden that would mean that they have a soul. And if they have a soul, they're not three-fifths of man. And, and that's the reason why they had to change the article to saying uh, all, all people are born equal to all people are created equal. That's why they had to change that. And so when you look at the real narrative, the real narrative, right, when you look at the whole thing about this slavery in America, it's a whole different picture, Jack. But the problem is we don't do our history and we allow people who really don't like Jesus to tell a narrative that will push you away from the Bible. That's a problem. And so it's up to us to actually look at the other sides of history that they don't like to look at because it fights against their, their narrative. It's up to us as a Christian to bring the black balance. And you look at that. Yeah, okay, so if there were white Jesuses everywhere, why is it that during them hot times of slavery, you don't hear black Christians complaining about that? You see slave revolts. You see them trying to read. You see them uh, being encouraged with the exodus, all this stuff. You see them actually founding their own denomination. You see all kind of stuff going on. And, and yet today, we live in total freedom, and we don't want to come to Jesus because we don't want to practice white man's religion. Like there's something wrong with that. The narrative is not historically accurate as people think. And that's just one thing. I could go on a whole head of other things that you brought up, but I'm not trying to be long winded. You know, I, all I'm trying to do is to let you know, bro, that you got more ammo in your in your jacket than you think. Yeah, you know I what I mean? I you know, Look, you, you every, do, everything bro. You said like I already know, I already know that about history, about you know the first century and there being uh, uh, African uh, scholars and all this kind of stuff. You know, so I, I already know like all all the things that you was just talking about. Majority of that stuff I already know. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's not that I don't I don't have like what you're saying like Elmo in my gun to to use something else. I, I tell them this too. Like I already know that these different things are prevalent and I let them know, you know, all this different kind of stuff 
you know, in in debunking that the white, you know, I I've been new that Africa, you know, the the churches you talked about and how they um, you know, every, everything was established there. You know what I'm saying? And that because because a lot of people will talk about Constantine and like some people, and this is an ignorant statement. They say, oh, Constantine created Christianity. Well, we already know that there was African scholars and stuff in the first century, before the third or fourth century, where where Constantine was in the midst. So that so this debunks that. So all that stuff you're saying, like I already know those things, and I already tell them, like I, I debunk what they're saying with those things. But something to add along to it is look look at this interesting stuff about us Negroes right now. You know, look look at this interesting stuff that points us to the Bible when it comes to parallels and when it comes to all these different things. So that's just something that's something that complements it. You see what I'm saying? So this is nothing that's contrary to the gospel, but it actually complements the gospel. You see what I mean? Can I say this? Um, the the, oh, the gospel up by itself, the gospel by itself should be appealing on its own. Um, the word of God uh, is, 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 is doing the saving, not genealogy. And again, the, uh, Deuteronomy four and two, Deuteronomy 12 and 32, uh, Revelation 22, 18 and 19 and etc. says, don't add to the word of God. And it because it doesn't need adding to, um, you, you said, you said something to make it more appealing. This, this is, a, this is beyond appealing. This is about saving souls about souls coming back to the source which is christ and christ did not preach theology simply didn't because if you're going to say that then that's going to move us to the position to add to, uh, to tell you or ask you to prove that which is that what christ said is that what christ taught and i have been through this bible from cover to cover he did not preach that so if we're going to preach anything outside of Christ, then that is an error, dear. Um, well, see, see, no, let me, um, I, I never, I never, I never claimed to, I never claimed to, uh, to basically preach this, to add on or to be nothing like that. I'm just, I'm, I'm saying in a generalized statement that it's something that complements it. Now, when, when I go out ministering to people, I minister to them. Christ, you see what I'm saying? But what what will happen is they re they reject that for so many different reasons. You see what I'm saying? And so it's not there's not a burden for me to point out what the Bible makes clear about who we are. You know, if if one of if one of the um if if, if one if one of the uh, statements that you can say against me if it's if it's basically that every everything has to be proven biblical. The, the 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 problem with that is you you can prove you can use stuff that's outside of the Bible to prove the Bible and the re the reason I know this is personally true because when I first came to Christ the reason I believed on Christ and and, and came to Him was because there was stuff that was proven to me outside of the Bible that let me know that Jesus in the Bible is real. So it wasn't stuff that was in the Bible that I took it and I, I let it marinate and I said, okay, now I believe on Jesus. It was things that was outside of the Bible that showed me this is it. And so from those things that let me know. And so still today, that same thing is going on. There's things outside of the Bible that can prove stuff that's in the Bible. And that's no different with this. There's, there's stuff outside of the Bible that can prove that that this is a component that's in the bible okay if we talk right, about right, right. Like, like certain certain aspects in the bible like we know that the trinity we, we we know that the word trinity isn't in the bible but we know that the effects of it the proponent of it is there we know that for a fact right so yeah. that's that that's the same thing here that's the same thing here is okay it may be specific words like like earlier before you was here, they would bring up like certain things. And it's like certain words in Christ saying, oh, black people in America are the Hebrews. No, that specific sentence isn't in there. You know, I won't say that it is, but there's proponents in there that let you know that it's there. The same as the Trinity. It's no different. Right, right, so right. You know what? Let, let me uh, let me interject right there because that, that's, Bible, that's that one thing that I wanted to that, and once again address. You know what I mean? Like that, like like that narrative right there. You know, so 
it's one thing to say that there are certain things in the Bible that show that the African Americans are Hebrews. But once again, I, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and try to now. When you look at the narrative of the Bible, well, all I'm trying to do is get you to think, bro. Think about it like this. If blacks are Hebrews in the Bible, you have to look at what the Bible says about Hebrews, Israelites. What, you have to look at the whole narrative. First off, the Bible never described Hebrews, Israelites, Jews as being like bloodline birth or descendants makes you a blood Hebrew Jew or Israelite. It never says in the scripture that birth, blood, DNA makes you a Jew, Hebrew or Israelite. It never says that. Every single time you look in the Bible of what makes you a Hebrew, Jew or Israelite, it is circumcision and keeping yourself under the law of Moses. I did a YouTube uh, hangout where I showed over 19, 19 scriptures, both in the Old and New Testament, that proved this. It showed that anybody could become a Jew. I showed Gentiles, both in the Old and New Testament, that actually shows people becoming Jews. The word proselyte. Is in the old or is in the New Testament and Old Testament. You know, it's the word Judaize, Judaizer, to become, to convert over to be a Jew. You have all kinds of things. I'm not gonna get into all the scriptures, but look at Esther 8:17, for example. You know, and it says that many of the enemies of the Jews were circumcised and became Jews for fear of the Jews. That's from the Septuagint, the Greek Septuagint version. 200 BC, that thing was written. That's the Old Testament version in Greek. That is the that is the Bible that basically Jesus and the apostles use. It's quoted 99% of the time in your New Testament. And so another thing is you look at the prophecies. They always say that, well, you know what? We're the ones that went through slavery and all these terrible things. The problem is when you look at that, God took the Israelites out of Israel and put them into Egypt. He did it during 3rd Maccabees. I broke that down. And also he did it in 70 AD and 135 AD. He did it three times. Now you look, Africans from West Africa went to America. West Africa is not Israel. Egypt is not America. Deuteronomy 28, verses 63 and 68, they are specific. God wasn't playing. He said, look, I, look I'm a, just as I rejoice in you to bring you into the land that you're about to possess, I'm rejoicing you to bring you out of that land and put you back into Egypt in ships. You know what I mean? So that, that, that's, a, that's a problem there. So you already got Africans that are in the West Africa that are going to America and you got Israelites that are in Israel going to Egypt. Those are two different things. Another issue is, is that when you look, I believe in Luke 21, Jesus looks up and he sees all those Jews who rejected him, who didn't believe him to be the Messiah. You know what he said to them? He said, you know what? You will be scat you will be taken captive into all nations and until the uh, and be, be treaded down on the foot of the Gentiles until um the the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. You're not gonna see me again until you all say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But yet you look at the Christians, you look at the people who follow Jesus, and Jesus said Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So you got one group that was cast out because they rejected Jesus. And you got another group that was sent out in the name of Jesus, by Jesus. Those people are the Christians. And I think it's funny that if you really don't know the basis of your word, if you don't know the Gospels, the story of Jesus, you could be trying your best to identify with a group of people that Christ ended up uh, casting out into all captivity because they rejected their own Messiah instead of identifying with a group of people called Christians that are made up of both Jews and Gentiles who were sent out into the world by Jesus. He said, just as a father end up sending me, I'm going to end up sending you out into the world. And there's something wrong with being excited about being a part of that group of people. 
You know what I mean? So when you look at the word just in its plainness, it's like, why would you want to be identified with a group of people that have rejected Christ, right? And yet, not only that, people who actually, when you look at their origins, these people are just Africans. When you look at historically speaking, you know, they're just Africans, you know what I mean? And so it's like if the Jews, Hebrews, Israelites, whatever, were never a race to begin with, how on earth can people say, well, I am a Hebrew because I'm looking at these prophecies and it looks like today? When meanwhile, though all that stuff happened throughout all the Old Testament and Deuteronomy 28, 68 happened three times. Like, that's not the way to really break down or interpret scripture. Like, that, that's not how it goes. And not only that, the New Testament is here. And so now Jesus says, if you follow me, this is Matthew 5, bro. Read Matthew 5. He said, if you follow me and you do what is right, he said, you're still going to be cursed and, and, and uh, persecuted and enslaved and, and for my name's sake. But you know what? You're going to have rewards in heaven. He said, for my name's sake. In the Old Testament, that wasn't like that. The Old Testament was, God said, if you listen to me, you're going to have your best life now. I'm going to give you grain. I'm going to give you lots of kids. I'm going to give you fertile ground. I'm going to give you everything. But if you don't listen to me, then your life is going to be a living hell. It's going to be cursed. And so if that's how the Old Testament says things versus how Jesus says things in the New Testament, then that means that you, you can't be saved and cursed. You, you, you know, and according to the New Testament, you know what I mean? You can't be cursed with the curses of Deuteronomy 28 from the Old Testament and then claim I'm under the New Covenant. I'm under the New Testament of Jesus Christ because they are being identified by suffering for Jesus versus Old Testament Hebrews that, you know, that basically gone under a lot of curses because they were, you know, they, they, they were disobeying God. So the question is, how can you tell the difference between a black Christian and a black Hebrew? If Jesus says, well, you know, you're going to, you know, look pretty bad following me because the world hated me first before it hated you versus, you know, a Hebrew that's not, doing the things that God wants him to do and all of a sudden his life will, will, looks crappy too. How can you theologically tell the difference if this is what the scriptures are laying out? So, so once again, man, you got people that were in America that were slaves that became Christians. They followed Jesus and that means the context of their suffering was not Deuteronomy 28. It was Matthew 5. Blessed are you when they curse you and revile you for my name's sake. For great is your reward in heaven. You know, bless those who curse you. You know, uh, pray for those who despitefully do evil against you. There's over 19 scriptures in the New Testament that talk about how Christians were suffering, how the church was suffering because the Jews didn't believe in Jesus and they suffered and they tried to kill him and how the Roman emperors and people who only believed in pagan gods, they didn't believe in Jesus. And so they stumped them out too. So the people who believed in Jesus were getting oppressed by the Jews and the Romans. They had it real bad. And so when you look at the plain narrative, the, the crystal clear narrative of scripture, it don't weigh out the narrative that the black Hebrew Israelites are trying to give. And, and you know, that's all I want to say. I mean, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Let me, let me I'll, say, I'll tell you what. I'll, tell, I'll say one last thing, and after that, I'll shut up for good. I'm not going to say nothing else. This will be the last thing I say, and after, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. The last thing I wanted to say to you, I wanted to read you Philippians chapter 3. And after that, I'm done. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to shut up. I, I, I want to respond to some of the stuff you just said, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. As soon, soon as I'm done, I will shut up forever. Like, matter of fact, I'll just roll and listen from the outside. So, so this is Philippians chapter 3. This is Paul. He says, Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Look out for the dogs. Look out for evildoers. 
Look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also, if anyone thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever I gained, I counted loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ and be found not in Israel, in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law. But that which comes through faith in what? In Israel and known who I am? No, in Christ. The righteousness from God that depends on what? Law keeping? No, faith. That I may know what? That I'm a Hebrew? No. No, and the power of his resurrection and may share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Oh. I could read further on, but he <laughs> said, look, man, I press gold, you're surprised at a high crawling. He goes on and on, man, but I just want to let you know, man, that there is nothing wrong Hi. with being called a Christian to be identified in Christ. And, you know, there, there's nothing deeper than union with God. There's nothing deeper than having an identity in Christ. Bruh, this, this, don't, this, this trade, wanna... don't trade what Christ gives you for some other stuff. You know, man. But I, I love you, bro. I'm, I'm serious, man. I'm gonna go on mute, you know, and uh, maybe we'll talk again, man. I'm serious, but I'm, I'm listening to you. I'm listening. I love you too, bro. It's, it's much love this way. This, this is what I want to say. Like from some of your comments, it's sent, like, and I heard you say something about like Black Hebrew Israelites. This, this, you wasn't here, you know, the whole time when I was talking to uh, the two women. So you didn't hear the stuff that I proclaimed at the very beginning. I, I want to make something clear to you because from what you said, it seemed like you're not clear about that, about who I am. I'm not a black Hebrew Israelite and I don't claim to be. Now, I, I do claim that I'm, I'm Hebrew. I don't claim I'm a black Hebrew Israelite. I'm not a part of no camps. I don't deny the divinity of Jesus. I don't deny the virgin birth. So I, I believe that the only difference between me and you, literally, when it comes to doctrine wise, when it comes to doctrine of the Bible, the only difference that I will have that you have or, or, or the only difference I will have with you or any, anybody else is that I don't see myself as African-American. I see myself as Hebrew. That's the only difference as far as everything else concerning doctrine, concerning salvation. We on the same page with that. So it seemed like like a lot of the stuff that you were speaking, especially like when you just, okay, you just read Philippians chapter three, you know, and you emphasize a, a couple points and like, you know, um, it, it says rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in flesh. The thing about this of me being a, a Hebrew, I don't put confidence in the flesh. This, this, it, this has nothing to do with salvation. I, pro, I proclaim that every Anytime I get online, I talk to people, I proclaim this has zero to do with being saved in all the different scriptures like that scripture that you read. And some of the scriptures they read was like from Romans chapter 11 and, and you know, Romans nine. And, you know, he, he is a Jew who is one inwardly. All, all of those scriptures are pertaining to people who are claiming to be uh, saved by the flesh. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not claiming to be saved by the flesh. I know the only way that I'm saved is through Christ, faith through Christ, through the grace of God. I know that. And that's what I proclaim. So I don't claim that this is why I got salvation because I'm a Hebrew. I don't claim that at all. And I, I just want to make that clear because it seemed like, you know, and, and, well, you wasn't here from the beginning. So you maybe you didn't know that about me, but I, this has nothing to do with salvation for me. This is simply acknowledging who I am as a person on this earth instead of being what 
the, the, the ones that control the world. And when they brought us to America, they said you're African American, you know, instead of me being that, I don't, I don't see that. I see from so many things of the Bible and the, and the nature and the history that I'm, I'm a Hebrew. You see what I'm saying? As far as salvation and all of that, I believe the same thing you believe about salvation. I don't exalt the law. I don't exalt the Sabbath day and all that stuff. I'm not, I'm not with none of that. And all, all of the people that in any, any of y'all ever, ever debunked any Hebrews, any camps, any groups, I'm against all of them. None of them are my brothers. I can't consider none of them my brothers. The reason why is because none of them have accepted the light of the gospel. None of them have accepted Christ, but they all practice work salvation or they deny the divinity or the virgin birth. You see what I'm saying? So I don't consider none of them brothers because they're not in Christ. So as, as a human being, they could be a brother in that sense, but not in a brother in the faith. I don't consider none of them brothers in the faith. I'm a brother in the faith. The only thing that I, I simply believe that I'm a Hebrew. You know, from there's so there's stuff in the Bible, but there's also stuff outside of the Bible that points that that's what that's what we are. And so I believe that. And so I don't I'm not with none of the camps. I don't practice none of the false doctrine. So none of those things, you know, that y'all used to y'all used to debunking Hebrews and stuff. That's about that. I'm against all of the same people y'all debunk. I'm against all of them. Every single one of them, anyone you name, I'm against all of them because they're not in Christ. You see what I'm saying? So that's a big difference between us. That's a huge difference. And I, I, I don't want to be categorized as them because I'm nothing like them. I, you know, I acknowledge grace, grace, salvation. It has nothing to do with law, the works of the law or the works of the flesh. You know, Romans chapter three, uh, it, it says, you know, no man shall be justified, you know, by the law, by the works of the law. You know, we're not justified by law or flesh. You know, I understand this and I, I acknowledge this openly. So I just want to make that clear. So can I ask this question? Um, based off on what you say regarding the uh, regarding salvation and all of that, I agree with that. But here's the problem. Um, and this is why the Bible tells us not to add or subtract or interject. The gospel alone by itself is the power unto salvation unto God by itself. So again, this genealogy talk, because we see in Timothy, we see in Titus, which we touched on earlier when it was flaming up in here, the Bible tells us don't even deal with that because that is vain talk. The Bible's message, and I, I got it clearly, and I, I clearly heard surreal. He was very dead on point. The, uh, the Bible's narrative is not giving a genealogy narrative, like pick up, the, uh, pick up the, the gospel and genealogy too. It's telling you to move away from that and deal directly with the gospel, to deal directly with Jesus. So I hear what you say on one end, but on the other end, it will sound like double talk. It, it's a fracture right there. Because the gospel alone is saving. The gospel alone, that's what saves. Jesus Christ is who saves. So why do we need this genealogy again? That's where I will push back to that question again. And, and, and let me answer. Now, again, because you said the gospel saves. I agree with you that it's only the gospel all by itself that saves. I agree with that. I'm not, I'm not against that at all. And I'm not, and this is... I'm not saying that what uh, what you call genealogy. I'm not saying that that saves. I'm not saying that at all. So it has it, again. I reiterate this. It has nothing to do with salvation now. But I understand the context of what 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 he's saying in the book of Timothy when he when he talks about don't have no you know no dissension and genealogies. That's in the context of based off salvation. So ha have none of those none of those quarrels about genealogy based off of being saved from that and i'm not proclaiming to be saved from this that's the that's the difference that i'm trying to let uh uh witness to you right now is, is it, it, everything in the bible concerning genealogy and concerning the flesh is all based off of using those things for salvation and what i'm telling you out my own mouth right now is i'm not using this nowhere near anything to do with salvation 
just simply of who I am. That's it. No salvation involved at all. Well, the Bible took care of all of that regarding identity, because again, while Brother Surreal was talking, uh, I'm not sure if you were paying attention uh, to it, but I was uh, showing it to everyone, the audience, and Paul takes care of, uh, uh, he speaks on that uh, uh, regarding identity. The Bible takes care of it um, uh, in regarding to that. And he says here in Galatians chapter uh, three, uh, 27, he says, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, put on Christ. There is neither Jew or nor Greek. That's there go genealogy right there. There's neither bond nor free. There go status right there. There is neither male nor female. There go gender right there. Not that foolish stuff that in between, but you know what I'm talking about, male or nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So Christ Jesus is the center of everything. Jesus is what's matter. The the nationality that don't matter to God, uh, mm -hmm. the status of you don't matter to God, and your gender at that you know, when I'm talking about male or female, don't matter in God, it's being in Christ is what mm -hmm. matters to God, which literally links you to the, the promise of Abraham. So, again, when you interject something that God is not even pushing or it doesn't matter to God, then that brings that flaws the situation. That is what we're saying on our side. And, this has and, no and oh, I'm the sorry. Only thing, oh, no, I'm going to say this and I'll shut up. The uh, only thing on the table that truly matters is, is the gospel, is Christ, is the Holy Spirit, is, uh, is God the Father. That is the only thing that matters and that links you directly to the promise which was made to Abraham. This genealogy stuff is a distraction. Paul counted it as dumb. Said, in, in other words, BS. He, he, that don't matter. As long as I am in Christ, that's what matters. Even in First Corinthians chapter seven, uh, chapter seven, verse eighteen, he tells him about the circumcision. If you circumcise, be circumcised. If you uncircumcised, be uncircumcised. That does not matter. If are you a servant in Christ? That's what Paul is pushing. That's what the Bible itself is pushing. So when you add those things which God says that's irrelevant, it becomes flawed. That's what we're saying. And, and 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 this, I keep going back to say the same thing. Like, I, I believe everything you just said in, in Galatians 28 and 29, it says, you know, everybody in Christ. It don't matter male, female, Jew, Greek. So the flesh doesn't matter concerning salvation. Everybody is in Christ, you know. So no, no matter what, how you look or any of that. And so, again, I say... Me being Hebrew has nothing to do with salvation. That I believe that's the great confusion concerning concerning this is that if if somebody was to say, "Well, I'm Hebrew," then to to Christians that looks like, "Well, you're saying that this is what saves you." I'm not saying that at all. I know that that's not what saves me. You know, so he, just like just like you said, none of none of the flesh and none of that doesn't matter. You know, that's not what's it, it has no uh. No foundation concerning salvation whatsoever. I agree with that wholeheartedly, a thousand percent. I agree with that. And that's why I'm steadily telling you, me being Hebrew has nothing to do with salvation. You know, so, so, so if I was trying to say that me being Hebrew, this mean that I was saved, then I would understand your argument towards me. It would make perfect sense. But because I'm not saying that, it doesn't make any sense to me. Because I know this so has nothing to do with my salvation. So if, if genealogy is not one of the qualifications of salvation, then that shouldn't even be spoken of in the first place, because the Bible clearly through the uh, through the uh, um, the word of God has literally dismissed that category. 
and he's and and, and, and in First Corinthians chapter twelve, Paul gives the uh, clear equation, and even here in Galatians chapter three, uh, 27, 28, and twenty nine, he gives the equation of one. So if, if we're dealing with one, then all of these other splits, where well, you are high blow group E one B one A, and you're E one B one two R W A whatever, that stuff brings in confusion we try to get a direct clear message of the gospel and keep the focus on christ when you move to those things which is being dismissed by god then that brings it it detours the person from the focus of christ and puts it on this craziness well i'm hebrew i'm chinese i'm african-american i'm black i'm brown i'm red that is all distraction the focal point the focal message and we can right here through paul right here and 28 29 and 27 the focus is christ he says it again for as many of you as have been baptized not into hebrew not into any type of the genealogy but christ have put on what not a nationality but put on christ himself christ himself i am in christ and christ is in me we are one that is the equation when you move to those other things then we got a problem the equation becomes flawed the, the the only the only time we hold on i'm under surreal and brother brian ted chip on here they if i was wrong they would have stopped me i get it i get it and i will go back to what surreal said earlier why isn't the gospel of jesus christ enough now you're gonna say it is but then in a double talk, and I'm not saying that maliciously to you, but in a double talk, you've got to identify with something else. I don't need anything else. I just need Christ. But that's my life source. He is my identity. I'm speaking on myself personally. I know my other brothers and sisters up here feel this way too. He is our everything. So if he's our everything,